Boo! Gotcha, cunts. I'm trying to set the tone for this video as we check out the spookiest homebrew chapter. Actually, the spookiest chapter, canon or otherwise. I was pretty sad when I finished my meme marine video because I thought we were out of quality homebrew chapters, but I was wrong, which is something that doesn't happen very often. Also, if you hadn't already noticed from my voice, I'm currently getting doggied by a nasty case of the flu, but she'll be right. Talking about homebrew chapters for a second, I wanted to bring up a project I've got in the pipeline. You guys seem to really like the meme marines animation I made, and the patron has been steadily climbing when I said the next one would come when we hit the $600 mark. We're, we're basically there, like it'll take a little bit longer, but we're basically there. So I'm going to start working on the next one, and I reckon you guys will love it. It's focused on all the homebrew chapters we have covered. For context, I made the first one by myself with only the help from voice actors. So with the small team I'm putting together for the next one, it should be fucking fantastic. Just thought I'd let you guys know what the next big thing for this channel is. That small team is not yet finished, so if you're interested in voice acting, animating, script writing, or asset creation, then hit me up on Discord and we can get jelly. So how does a loyalist chapter spook cunts so much that they make Jason look like an adventurous fleshlight, Freddy Krueger like a poorly circumcised cock, and now nah, fuck that movie. And the Night Lords look like sparkling little twilight. Well, that's what we're going to find out today. Before we cuddle up and prepare to shudder in total fear, I want to quickly talk about this video sponsor. In case you've been living under a rock for the last couple of months, Raid is a brand new collection RPG game. It's literally everywhere at the moment, so you definitely know what I'm talking about. Introducing Raid Shadow Legends. With a smexy ass storyline, high quality graphics, giant boss fights, and more than 400 champions for you to collect and personally customize. That's enough content here to keep you going for a long ass time. A really cool thing about this game is it uses the classical style of gameplay we used to see in our favorite childhood games, with the bonus that it's now on your phone. If you liked Adventure Quest or Dragon Fable or even Pokemon style games, then you'll enjoy this. The graphics, detail and animation are also pretty unreal. Just check out the level of detail on these champions. Raid's graphics and storylines are pretty ahead of their time. You'd likely compare it to a AAA console game instead of other mobile games because the quality is that much higher. And it's free to play. And like, I'll be honest guys, that's a lot of um, positive star ratings. The game is growing super fast and they expect to see a huge update this month, which will be quite fun for new players. This is the best time to join the action. You can find me in-game under the name, you guessed it, Major Kill. If you guys are keen, we can jump into a clan together. Go to the video description, click on the special links, and you'll instantly get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of the new player program to start you off. Thank you Raid for sponsoring this video. Now that that's all sorted, let's get into it. The scary marines, BOO! Fucking Jesus. Whew. Also known as the children of Ivastan are a loyalist chapter with extremely secret contradictory backstory. This is deliberate by them as they don't want anyone to know anything about them, as their fear tactics aren't your usual vanilla night lord shit, like impaling babies or mutilating dogs. No, their power comes from fear of the unknown. So much so that no one actually really knows what they look like. In all sightings of the scary marines, they appear totally pitch black with glowing red eyes. Shining a light source upon the scary marines result in them disappearing, all the light being devoided by the shadow of a 9 foot tall super soldier. They take psychological warfare to the extreme, with minimal actual engagement. The only violence they commit is extremely random and unexpected, almost ridiculous. For example, to scare a scouting party of Elder, the scary marines will sporadically place dead mutilated corpses of other races in the area, and not Elder. It's common for the Elder to quickly leave a planet once fresh tower bodies start showing up, despite the nearest tower being fucking ages away. Other tactics to scare Xeno or Chaos armies involve always lurking in the peripheral vision of enemies, vanishing when they turn to look, or some of the more direct techniques employed will be the scare marines replacing members of the army or society. Whether it be psychopowers powers or just complete and other intimidation, the members of society do not call out or report the sudden swapping of their neighbours. Instead, they just get really fucking scared and try not to draw attention to themselves. Now, those are some of the scare tactics used upon mass populations. But how about, let's say, on officials or special targets? Well, a favourite method by the scary marines is to place a freshly bloody knife in the hand of their sleeping target. When the target wakes up, they flip out and they call in their guards. The blood sample gets tested and it is revealed the DNA matches the target or the person that woke up holding the knife, despite there being no detectable cuts on the target. Spooky stuff. The longer the campaign gets, the scarier it gets. Subtle shit like the appearing in the peripheral vision 
or scaring single targets are just the beginning. Once enough paranoia has been instilled into the populace, the scare marines will then perform a ceremony. It is unknown what this ceremony is officially called because the scary fuckers don't talk or communicate at all. However, most know it as the reaping. The elder, however, call it Fright Night because the reaping sounds too much like the raping, which if you know anything about elder lore is a bit of a sensitive topic for them. Basically, what they do is shut off all light sources in the area on a starless night. When the lights are shortly reactivated, the population will be horrified to see dozens if not hundreds of scare marines in the shadows or on rooftops looking down at them. Nothing will happen for some time, even if the populace begins firing upon the scare marines. They will not flinch and you can't even hear the impact of the bullets bouncing off their armor. If the bullets do indeed bounce off their armor at all, then suddenly all light will vanish again momentarily and turn back on. However, the time that's all back on, the scary marines will be gone. Instead replaced by the mangled corpses of everyone who has vanished or been replaced during the scary campaign. This technique is basically a way for scary marines to say, no, you aren't going crazy, we are here and we will fucking murder all of you unless you praise the emperor. Or if it's a xeno race, then it's until you get the fuck off this planet. Any man... Xeno or Asian that witnesses the true form of a scare marine will be hunted by them until they are killed. It is unknown if the scare marine's seemingly supernatural ability to appear and disappear make absolutely no noise even when firing a bolter and travel across continents almost instantly is a work of advanced technology, powerful psycho abilities or they're just a bunch of bloody excellent magicians. Regardless of what it is, the result is the same. Local populace shit themselves and usually cave to the demands of the scary marines. However, some groups of individuals do not scare so easy, so despite the fear in their hearts they continue to try fight against the scary marines. Maybe it's because they think that it's all just a show of smoke and mirrors, and that the scary marines do not pose a significant threat, more of just a nuisance. However, they are quickly proven wrong when scary marines will appear next to the enemy commanders and let out the only noise they know how to make. <coughs> This scream itself is enough to buckle the morale of enemy soldiers, and if they aren't cowering in fear by that point, then they will be quickly violently dismembered by a blur of black metal and shadows. Crikey. Because of this method of tactics that leave their targets either dead or paranoid to the point of insanity, the Imperium has a really hard time determining what is true and false about these guys. Do they use fear toxins similar to the one Scarecrow uses in order to create hallucinations in their enemy, or is it just a chapter full of dynamo wannabes? We don't know yet. As in my other videos, I would say it's a good time to talk about their relationship with other chapters and factions. The Scare Marines aren't a very big faction. Or maybe they are, we don't really know for sure. However, they are entirely independent from the Imperium, hence all of their recruits, armory and resources are gathered themselves. Also, the most anyone has ever seen in one place is only about a hundred or so, so there can't be that many. As a result of this, they tend to only have a couple haunting campaigns going at one time. However, just because the fuckers scare the pubes out of my balls doesn't mean they can't have a sense of humor. Occasionally, a small group of scare marines will infiltrate and non-violently scare and haunt other loyalist chapters for the gags. Their favorite being the ultramarines. A tactic the scare marines use to fuck with the ultramarines is one of their classic strategies with a twist. In various cities in Ultramar, the scare marines will snuff out the light. Upon the light sources being reactivated, thousands of dead Tau will be scattered everywhere in weird poses, all of them dressed in white pants with white hats. Marnilios Kalgar refuses to comment on the situation. The scare marines tend to avoid most of the other home food chapters. The pretty marines are too tunnel vision on their own ego to be able to use their peripheral vision anyway, and the reason marines take the fun out of it by excessively using drones with every frequency of vision and detection along with employing multiple sisters of silence. The biggest fuck up by the scare marines however was when they snuck up behind some angry marines and grabbed them suddenly to scare them. This resulted in the angry marines getting really really fucking angry and they began massacring nearby xeno populations. This seems okay, except for the fact that it was during peace talks and it completely ruined everything. Needless to say, the scare marines don't spook the angry marines anymore. Scare marines also avoid the meme marines, as the meme marines are already batshit insane and constantly hallucinating anyways, so there's really no point with them. Now onto the Elder. The Elder are an immensely emotional race. So emotional that they're able to murder fuck a god into existence. So when you spook the Elder, they don't enjoy it at all. The scare marine tactics are extremely effective against the Elder, and any and all campaigns they wage against them mostly end in great success. 
Craftworld, Exodites, and even Dark Elder are extremely paranoid, as it is when you throw in supernatural marines that only exist to instill fear, it's not a good time for any of them. Harlequins, however, don't really give a fuck, as they're too busy doing their own weird shit. The Tau find the presence of the scary marines deeply unsettling, however they are not as outwardly terrified as the Elder or hostile humans. This is due to them being similar to the reasonable marines in nature, and their use of drones. In saying this though, as they are filthy xeno scum, the scare marines employ more lethal scare tactics to great effect. So whilst the reasonable marines will ignore the prank-like nature of the scare marines, the tail end up getting sodomized to death by the puppeteered corpses of their fellow comrades. Both the Tyranids and the Necrons are avoided by the scare marines, as their lack of fear combined with antique warp technology is enough to stave off the technological and potential psycho power that the scare marines employ. Whilst the scare marines are optimal for intimidating, unruling rebellious populations, as well as crushing certain Xenos, they can still be highly effective against Chaos. The scare marines' hatred for Chaos runs deep, as we can tell by one of their names, the Children of Ivastan. Although they use the usual fear tactics to wear away at the morale of the enemy, the intention is never to scare them off. The fear tactics are merely to soften and toy with the enemy defences before in a single night the entire Chaos population will be massacred with no survivors. Conflicts between the Scare Marines and the Night Lords, however, result in silent, lethal campaigns. You will never see them fight each other, only the result of a fight, whether it be flayed corpses, pools of blood, severed body parts, or random tower bodies. Because why not? It is unknown who wins these conflicts, as no one ever talks about them. However, as the Scare Marines are rumored to be a loyalist splinter of the Night Lords, it's no wonder they're trying to murder their tits off 24-7. And that pretty much covers our lore to date, guys. Because of how much mystery surrounding the chapter, we can't get as much as info as we usually would like to. But that is all a part of it. As this is a homebrew chapter, the lore is open for us to play with and create together. If you're still watching this, then fuck yeah, I have something cool if you guys are keen. I'm getting a seriously impressive Warhammer Fantasy artwork commissioned to share with the community and also to get printed on canvas and hang up in my room. As such, I've been on the hunt for some good artists to help me. I'm basically looking for a Dark Souls styled image of two famous Warhammer Fantasy characters back to back done in pencil and shading. Hit me up on Discord if you know anyone or you're keen on yourself to get involved. Paid obviously. I ain't no Jew. Actually I probably am but I still pay people. I guess that means I'm not like a practicing Jew. Cheers for watching cunts and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.